And we are live, guys. Hey, welcome to the broadcast. Jeff from Home Renovation DIY. Today we're going to answer the question, is the house you're looking to buy a great investment or is it a money pit? That's right. We are going to dive into the world of real estate. We're going to be taking a look at what's going on in the marketplace, looking at some pictures together. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to do some research. We're going to toss around some ideas. So the first idea I want to toss around is this. Um, Let's share my screen right away. Matt, Matt's back in Ottawa here. He's helping me out with the stream today. I want to show you what uh, a cool $17.5 million will buy you in Canada. Now, if you're not familiar with Canada, she gets bloody cold. So here we have an island that you can buy that has a beautiful mansion in it. Comes complete with tennis court and all the trimmings. Look at this. I mean, that is a boathouse, right? That is a boathouse. That's a bloody house. That's a guest house. The mansion comes only with a few bedrooms. So you can't spend $20 million and have all your friends and family over. It's only a four-bedroom home. So that kind of sucks. But uh, hey, what do you do? Though this is what a glorified lifestyle in Canada looks like. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Open concept living spaces, all the modern amenities, lots of glass. And now check this out for just for fun, right? You've got... Beautiful walk-in shower. They can stick 12 people in, but who needs that, right? This has a lap pool. This has a hot tub. This has a cold plunge pool. It has a shower. It has a steam room and a sauna. Beautiful closets. Beautiful landscape. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But for me, guys, if I'm going to buy a house for almost $20 million, I'm not going to buy it in a place where eight months of the year, it's just an exaggerated skating rink. All right, so... um. Thanks, but no thanks. What we're going to do today is we're going to help you out. I'm going to take all my years of renovation, and I'm going to take you to a place where I want you guys to get in the comment section. I want you to tell me where you where you want to buy, what your budget is. I want to quick blow this up in the Zillow app here. No, it's not sponsored, but I find it effective. Okay. We're going to experiment together, and I'm going to give you some quick what what you know what I would expect to find in a house at that kind of price. I'm going to talk to you about what the renovation budget would be to bring it up to a, the best market standard, okay? And then we can decide together, hey, is this a money pit or is this a good investment? It's going to be it's going to be a little bit fun. So I don't care where you live. Um, well, it's kind of got to be North America, I think. I don't know how, what the extent of Zillow is outside of North America. We can try. So if you're from England and you want to give it a shot, all right? <laughs> we will see what we will see. Anyway, let's just jump into the chat here. we got a bunch of people here, nice and quick. Um, I do have a giveaway today, okay? I am giving away $100,000 worth of information to everybody who's watching. <laughs> That's right. My goal today in this live show is to help every one of you find a house that you can remodel and renovate on your own as a DIYer. And over the next couple of years, earn $100,000 of the tax-free revenue so that every three to five years, you can recycle that. Over the course of your home owner experience, instead of looking at your home as a one and done, the family farmstead, I want you to look at it as an opportunity to build your own personal wealth. Buy a house, fix it up, sell it as a personal equity position you've held for a few years. You get that profit tax-free almost everywhere in North America, okay? And I say almost everywhere because I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 99.9% percent sure. Anyway, let's jump into this. Okay. Uh, guys, if you've got a neighborhood, Matt's going to pick your neighborhood. If you are if you are a, a member of the channel, you're going to have a little squiggly S sign next to us for StreamYard so we know that you're a member. And hopefully we can pick out all of our members and help you guys do some shopping. Right away, let's just do this. We got Regina. Okay. Saskatchewan. And our price range is high end 270. Okay. Now I've never looked at the Saskatchewan market before. I'm going for single family homes. Okay, guys, give me your price, but I also want to know what kind of year you're looking at. Now, if you don't tell me a year, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to go um, minimum 1975, maximum. 1985. And I'll tell you why. That 10 years is the sweet spot. Now, if you're willing to do more work, 
you're cool with plumbing, electrical, and plaster and everything else, then let me know you can go earlier, okay? But if you're looking for a remodel, you want something post, um, how should we call it, building code, all right? So you know what the hell you're buying. Post asbestos, post aluminum wiring, and then up to 85 is still almost 40 years old. So if it's an original condition, there's a lot of room to make some money. All right, here we go. Let's check it out. Right out of the gate. Wow, Saskatchewan's affordable. All right. So for anybody in Ontario who's freaking out because you can't get a house, uh, just move to Saskatchewan. Problem solved. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to find something that's cute. Maybe a little bit of curb appeal or potential of. This is the top end of your budget. Let's try this one. It's a four bed, two bath. All right. Now I am going to blow this up just a touch. Okay. Watch the cursor on my screen. Do you see my cursor on there? There, it's just of the door. Yeah. What if you changed the roof line and you added a little bit of an A-frame right here? Okay. That's all you got to do. That changes the curb appeal of this house. It gives it some character and personality. And it's just, it's, it's just additional framing, a little extra roof line, and that makes the home a lot more welcoming. Okay. So let's go take a look at some pictures. First of all, this is a 1977. It's got first air, natural gas, a couple of garage spaces, decent price per square foot, 2,000 square foot home. That's a pretty good size house for this kind of money. Usually you don't see a deal like this unless you're down like in, 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 in like Texas. But for Saskatchewan, I'm excited about this. Let's check it out. Let's see what we got. Um, okay, you got a fenced yard. Yeah, it's a little odd, but it's got garage space next to the local soccer field. That's cool. Nice, bright spaces. Okay, the galley kitchen. I hate galley kitchens because it's so claustrophobic. Anyway, we got carpets. Yay, carpet, carpet, carpet. All right, and it's a single level house. Now, here's the deal. All right, and look at that fireplace. Doesn't that just scream, please help me? <laughs> Right away, okay, um, plastic tub surround, main floor laundry, kind of his and hers here and there. We've got a trap door into what I'm going to guess is some sort of a crawl space. Okay. All right, well, that was interesting. Here we go. Here's my take on this house. If you're in Saskatchewan, that's affordable. What you can do to a house like this, because generally speaking, that simple roof line is going to be a truss construction in 1977. Once we got into 1969, 1970, almost everything was a truss construction, which means all the interior walls in a truss you can remove. So you could literally go in there, change your flooring. Your wiring is still good, You're, you, so you don't have to worry about that. Your plumbing is still good, so you don't have to worry about that. Your post building code, okay, which means that your major mechanical is probably still sufficient. So all you really got to do there is change your flooring fixtures and furnishings. So you get rid of the flooring, you bust out a couple of walls, you go open concept, you put in a new kitchen, modernize the space, keep it clean, keep it simple. And something like that, I'm sure you could get some really good value on. Now understand, anywhere you go in Canada, your building materials cost about the same money. So if you're in Toronto, that same house is going to sell for $1.4 million. Okay? When it's finished, you probably buy it for eight fifty nine hundred. dollars dollars But the point is, if you're going to put uh, flooring and a kitchen and a paint job, uh, do something with the outdoor living space, make it a little more functional. Okay. You're probably looking at around about a $40,000 material investment. Now in that market, you're only going to get a return, maybe dollar for dollar. So maybe you can push that budget there to the 320 on a resale. All right. Not exciting, but it's at least it's an affordable place to live in the meantime. Right now, Let's go find somebody else who's got another neighborhood to check out here. Matt, help me out. Richmond, Virginia for $250. All right. Well, first we've got to kill that one. There we go. Richmond, Virginia. And we're going to go down to $250. All right. Let's see what we can find. Same time frame. Let me know, guys, if you want to go earlier. Okay. Richmond, Virginia. Wow, now we got a different market here, obviously, right? I got two options. Now I've got up to $250,000, and new construction is running $500,000 for a four to five bedroom, three to four bath. But this one here, again, see the simple design? You see how that roof there, honestly, 
just that roof with the overhang creating a porch, it gives the health a little more character. What you would find is if, if you had your roof line change the other direction, that A-frame, it would give it much more curb appeal. You definitely want to do something about all the bushes. Remember, bushes around a house trap moisture in the home as well. So make sure you keep things manicured. And I'm not talking about just your home, gentlemen. All right, now let's see. Well, this is a 1985, so it's almost 40 years old. That's uh, electric heat pump, blah, 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 third of an acre, decent price. All right, we're going to scroll through some pictures. Yeah, we got a lot of foliage here. We really, 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 really want to trim that back. Foliage up against siding is never a good idea because it traps moisture in your walls, okay? Now, Richmond is a hard neighborhood to get at this kind of price. So let's see what is wrong with this house. Well, let's get closer up. Yeah, she's a little nasty. I'm even looking at the ceiling. Yeah, okay. Wow. All right. Sorry about that, guys. I'm just learning how to use my fingers. Okay. This one already has an open concept living space. That is bizarre. I did not expect to see that. Has no appliances. Whoever picked the color, you know, needs to be shot. We got some interesting texture on the ceilings. Yeah. A little bit of dirt, a little bit of a trim issues. We, we basically call this deferred maintenance. All right. There's a lot of issues. Simple plastic shower tubs. Everything here is on the simple. Here's the good news, all right? And here's the good news I'm going to tell you right now. You see this? In the entire area of Richmond, for a house under up to 250000 there's only one option, which means that everything you do to that house is making you money, all right? Now, watch this. I'm going to change your price. I'm going to go to $450,000. I still only have a handful of homes, all right? So if you want to buy that one in Richmond, and you want to change your flooring, all right? You want to change your paint shop. Give it some outdoor living space. Manicure the yard. Give it some curb appeal. You've got an absolute gold mine sitting there because there's nobody else who's going to have a house that's selling in that same kind of price range. So you've got a really good deal going on. There are five houses less than half a million dollars in Richmond. So buy the cheap one. Fix it up and give it some curb appeal. And then, you know, write your own check, all right? <laughs> Remember, you got to live somewhere. Why pay rent when you can pay to buy a place that you're fixing up so that all your work creates tax-free revenue? Got to get in our head. All right, let's go. Let's go over the next question here. Who's the next victim of our show tonight? Asheville, North Carolina, under 350. Okay, Asheville. And see, Asheville, uh, Asheville Ave? No, we want to go city. That's my bad. All right, got to learn how to drive. Here we go. Asheville, North Carolina. I'm still getting Asheville Drive. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's helping. Ah, oh, my goodness. Here we go. Um, I'm going to try this one more time. Asheville, Ohio. Yeah, it's not helping me out. We're going to change this up. Sorry, Chris. Um, I'm having difficulty using my fingers here for some reason. We're going to move this along because nobody wants to sit here and watch me struggle with the typing. Noblesville, Indiana. Wow. Okay. Indiana. And we're talking max 275. All right. So we'll change our budget here. 275. Now, Indiana. That's an interesting area. I've never looked at Indiana before. Okay. And let's see what we got. All right. Noblesville. Looks like they're sending you a little bit north of Noblesville when I zoom in on this. So this is like a subdivision. Looks like you're going to be about another 20 minutes north. But there are three. There are a couple of options here. All right. Yeah, it's tough. I get it. But here's the deal. 1984. Um, electric. A little bit of an HOA. Whatever. That's fine. You got a neighborhood. 
Um, let's scroll through some pictures here real quick. It's a nice piece of property. You got a little bit of privacy, place to park some cars. Got a little, little bitty porch off the back end. Somebody's gone through here and done an open concept. They got a beam through the house. It kind of looks to me like this has already been rent-out. And this is like one of these flips. You're going to see this a lot when you're looking for houses, guys. People come in and they'll like paint it gray, like as if that makes it sexy. Put in some cheap flooring, right? And then like sweep up the place and maybe trim the yard. And they think, hey, that's a flip. No, nah, come on. Like you got to have some value. Like right away, the carpeting has got to go. Whoever's living there has got all their stuff when they took the pictures. That's not how you show a house. But let's just take a look at one more quick example. That was a 250. Here's one for 199, built 1976. All right. That's really interesting. Okay. And they're not showing us much of anything else. Yeah. Great. So what you're finding out here is that at 275, you don't have a lot of options. You're a little further out of town than you wanted to be. There's only one house that's really worth buying. Somebody's already tried to remodel it a little bit. A house like that, you're probably in a very similar situation. What you want to do is you want to go to your price point here. All right, let's go change 275. Let's see if there's room. Go to 375. We'll apply that. Okay, so for 375... Yeah, we got 1,800 square feet. And the one that we were looking at was only 1,200 square feet. So what I'm going to try to tell you is this. If, if, the, if, if you're 275 to 375, if that bridge is 600 extra square feet, you have to do an addition to your house to get into that market range. And it's not worth it. Okay? Now, if you're just looking for a house that you can afford, then do the 250, right? Remember, don't buy a house you can't afford to live in and have money left over to put back into it. You want to have about $1,000 a month worth of material money so that every couple of months you can take on a major project. So that's just the way it is. All right, let's take a look. Matt, let's bring up somebody else to see what else we can we can find. The Bay Area, California, under 650. I'm not holding out a lot of hope for you, but we're going to try this out. Bay Area, California. California. I don't know if that. No, nope, that doesn't work. So, San. We're talking about um, San Francisco here. San Francisco, California, and we're going to try a, a, a six fifty. Wow. Let's see if there's a single house. Nope. Let's remove the boundary. Let's try. It. We're checking Oakland now. There's nothing, nothing. You're close to the ocean on the West Coast. Now, what we can do is we can change your home type. We can add townhomes. We can add condos, apartments. I think what I got to do is I got to draw this. There's something going on with this machine every once in a while. I got to apply it and then remove the boundary. Anybody, anybody? No, we're not finding nothing. Wow. Okay. That's incredible. All righty. And that's largely because I think we're asking for between 1975 and 1985. That probably was all built in the 50s or modern day. We will see. All right. Let's try another, another location here. Arlington, Virginia. And we're looking up to 600,000. I think that's the problem I had there. I didn't have enough zeros. I had $650 instead of 650,000. We're going to go back to the San Francisco in just a minute. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. Um, really? Let's remove the boundary. Okay. So there is something, but it's the northeast of Washington. 594. Or you can buy a boat, apparently. <laughs> oh, wow. That is not what you're looking for. You know, just out of out of curiosity, maybe we add an extra few thousand bucks. Doesn't make a bit of difference. 
Yeah, so this, Arlington is one of these areas, okay? Now, let's change the tone, go to townhouses. Boom, we found something. Okay, 585. Let's take a look at this place. You know, sometimes if you're doing home shopping, you're going to have to realize that townhouses are semi-detached. This is your only option at a price point. And that's not a bad thing because there's still market pressure to support that value. 1,224 square feet, two bed, three bath. That actually sounds like a nice little place. Okay, it's all brick structure. Looks like a nice clean neighborhood. You got an outdoor patio with some, looks like maybe Ipe wood. You got a fireplace, open concept living area here. A little bit of a pass through with the kitchen, as you can see here. That's not too terrible. Okay. The problem I have with this one, I'm going to be honest with you, is it looks like it's been done. It's already got stone counters. It's already got a decent quality floor. Bathrooms are done. This is not a remodel. There's not a hell of a lot you can do to this place that can get return on investment. So unless they got a backyard that needs some love, you no, know, see, there you go. And so when you're looking at a house, think, I want original condition. I want, I want to buy a home that somebody bought from a generation back in the day where they would buy the house and they wouldn't touch a single thing. There are, there, there's an entire generation of baby boomers who are retiring and selling their homes and the houses are original condition. And they just didn't put the money into the place. They just sat on it, right? Now, you might have to go back to 1960s and, and, and early 70s to get some of those houses, and they require a lot more work. But the goal is to find something in 75 to 85 that's completely god-awful ugly, <laughs> that doesn't need work. This place has been remodeled already. So there's no value there. And that seems to be one of your only options in the Arlington area. All right. So now we're going to do, so we're going to go Cisco. I spelled that totally wrong. We're going to go back to San Francisco. I'm not sure why I'm spelling that wrong. California. Oh, my goodness. Cisco. There we go. California. All righty. Yeah, I wanted to take me to a street. Okay, remove the boundary. 650,000 houses, townhouses. Still, we're finding nothing. There's one. Look at that. Like, look at this market. It's incredible. You get near the water. Look at some of these cities. Okay, so here's a townhouse, almost $600,000. Getting closer to Fremont. I want to see, where's the 620? Let's, let's take a look at this. We're going to explore this one. All right, there we go. Then we got a bit of a Spanish style. This is 83. So if this is original condition from 83, we might be into some money here because there's no competition. You're at the bottom end of the price. You're the only guy available for sale. Uh, call them in the next five minutes if you want it, or it'll be gone. <laughs> okay, it's a two-story. It's got a beautiful walkout terrace on the second floor. And all of the flooring in here appears to be what? What is the gold? Okay, I am not liking here. Yeah, I'm not liking this. Let me just show you something. I'm going to blow this up as much as I can. Now, can you see all of the gapping here? Okay. What that's showing me is that somebody put in their own laminate flooring and didn't know what they were doing, or they didn't have proper air conditioning or thermostat or humidistat control of the house, and the flooring's all separated. So they threw this huge rug in to sell the house so it looked nice in the pictures. Don't be fooled. That right there is needing new flooring. Okay, let's see what else we got. Oh, yeah, here, there's a picture here. We've got walls separating the kitchen from the living space and a wall separating the little eat-in kitchen from the other living space. That's a lot of wall. All it does is just close everything off and it makes the entire house a hallway. Here's the challenge. When you've got a floor plan and you've got walls down the middle instead of beams to support the house, both sides of that wall have to have a hallway. So you're gonna have 2,000 square feet and you're gonna have 1,500 square feet of hallway. 
What's the point in that? All right. Well, that's just ugly. I'm sorry. Um, okay. It's got potential. I'm going to suggest that whatever's going on here, that they're selling that at 620. And it's only 1,500 square feet. <sighs> what would I do if I was there and I was going to renovate? I would get rid of this wall, whatever that is. See, it's only two by four. It's thin. There's no mechanical going to the second floor in that wall. The mechanical is going up this kitchen wall. This one is thick. And that's why the ceiling is like that. Probably has the bathroom up there and everything else. Okay. I would get rid of all that laminate floor and I would actually go to hardwood. Remember, laminate and vinyl are fake hardwood. So if you have a house that doesn't have a valuation of six, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand 900,000 when it's done, then you, you go with the cheap flooring. But if you have a house that has there's almost zero competition at that price point in that area, you could buy that house, put in actual hardwood, real quality tile, do the bathroom upgrades, give it a paint job. White walls do not sell a house very well, all right? And if you paint the inside of your house, you're going to get a 5% return. Boom, you just made 30 grand painting the inside. And you could... Do up the patio on the second floor terrace a little bit. This house has a little bit of potential. So I know it seems expensive if you're from not like in coastal or, or big city area. But the reality is a house like this, it's got cheap flooring and bad layout and no paint job. There's money to be made. And there's simple projects that don't have to cost you an arm and a leg, right? It's cosmetic and it's flooring. So I would actually consider buying that one, actually. Not bad. All right. Matt, what else we got? That wall is holding up the house. No, I don't think it is. Generally speaking, two by four walls are not structural. And you know what? You have options when you want to remove a wall. You can put up a beam that's underneath your floor joist, or you can insert a beam into your floor joist. Hopefully soon in this channel, we buy a house that needs something like that so we can do those videos for you. But I've got a lot of experience dealing with structural engineers and removing walls. They're not as tricky as you think, okay? And whenever you've got a drop ceiling in a kitchen area, that gives you all the potential and all the capacity you need to run all your wiring and heating, whatever. The secret here is to get in there, go into that, that space underneath if you've got access to it, and find out where your mechanical is running from. In Canada, it's easy. We have basements, right? So we can just go down and say, yeah, there's no ducting. There's no wiring going up in that space. We know the wall is empty. Um, but uh, if you're on slab, it's a different, different poison altogether. Okay. Now, let's take a look at another house here. Who else we got? Grayson County, Kentucky, 150 to 200. Brandon, let's take a look, Brandon. Uh, what do we call here? Grayson County, Kentucky. All right, that works. And we're looking for a maximum of 200. Okay, we'll apply. We got lots of options. We'll get rid of the townhouses. Okay. So this is where it gets interesting because now we're in a neighborhood where the houses are really quite affordable, like almost ridiculous. So let's take a look at this one here. This one's 195. It's the high end of your budget. Okay. It looks cute. It's maintained. It's clean. Everything's manicured. It's 1978, two acres of property. That tells you a lot about what's going on here. Let's take a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. We got some outbuilding going on. We got a we got an access to the basement from outside. Okay. That's a really interesting theme that they got going on in this house. Very industrial. It's almost like they made this house to look like a like an industrial pub. <laughs> That's really wild. Barnwood everywhere. Okay. And original cabinets from the 70s. So it's clean, it's it's dry, it's functional, right? Yeah. And the basement is just real basic. There's nothing on the floor, just did the walls, called it a day. You got a nice little space and then your exit. Okay. Now, that's 200000 In hindsight, let's go take a look at this one for forty nine. Let's see if there's room to make some money here. Single family in 85, half an acre. That's still a good piece of dirt. Okay, so I'm looking at this one here, I'm thinking it looks like it might be a trailer, like a mobile home. Laminate flooring is shot. The kitchen is shot. 
the walls have got wallpaper and vinyl. Yeah, it's old. It's nasty. But old and nasty makes money. Because the wood don't care how clean the place is. And if you take it back to the wood, <coughs> generally speaking, that's where your money is. So you get new flooring, get rid of the paneling, put in drywall, clean this place up, let the sun shine in. You have a house. It is definitely a mobile home on, on blocks. But you know what? <clears throat> You're not going to get to 200000 on it. But you sure could clean that up and make it worth something that's respectable and worth living in. You could maybe put upward pressure on the 125 to 140 market. But if you can afford it, I would buy probably something like this, the 165. Okay? This is cute. Yeah. Again, this one's been done over. So here's somebody who bought a house probably for like 80000 and they've done the renovation. They've remodeled it already. <clears throat> the end of the day, guys, when you're buying in a neighborhood like Kentucky, you're not buying because your house is going to make you a fortune. You're buying there because your house doesn't cost you a fortune. There's more than one way to make money. And in the renovation world, I buy in-house in, in neighborhoods where I'm going to get a 300, 400% return on my investment as far as the additional work that I do. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. In a place like this, where the housing values are devalued, what you're looking at is an opportunity to buy at a very affordable rate. So it's a different market. So be careful how much you want to invest. If you just need flooring and a paint job, you're in great shape, okay? And try to keep it to something like that. Don't bite off something that's going to have hidden surprises, lots of bushes up against it, because you're going to find you're going to have insulation issues and mold issues and mice issues. So clean property, dry house is always a good investment. All right, and let's go, Matt. Let's see. Uh, let's let's take a look at another one. Irondale AL. Okay. And we're looking for up to 300. <clears throat> okay. Irondale, Alabama. Did I, did that work? Huh. Irondale, Alabama, okay. Here we go, here we go. Yep, I know, it's a computer, it's not my thing, right? I use a hammer for 11, for Pete's sake. Okay, so we've got a few houses here in and around the 250 range. Hmm. Let's find one that has got the largest square footage this one's over 3,000 square feet for 279. All right. Built in 1978. Uh oh. I don't think they got a lot of pictures. Yeah, they don't. Ha ha ha. Now that one's worth looking at. And here's why. When I take a look at a house on Zillow and it doesn't have pictures inside, what it's telling me is something really bad happened there. <laughs> you might have a roof problem, maybe there's some water damage. Maybe, maybe uh, you know, the sh shootout at the OK Corral happened in the living room. Who knows? But the point is this. Over 3,000 square feet. Okay? Coming soon. It's been on Zillow for 13 days. It's not coming soon. It's available now. Um, in the same neighborhood, you're getting 11 and 1,200 square feet for almost the same price. To me, that tells me that that place has got... Uh, Issues with the cosmetics, right? Maybe maybe some raccoons got in there. There's a hole in the wall or, or kids were in there just tagging the house and spray painting. It's all cosmetic. I don't care how much, you know, raccoon feces is on the carpet. You can roll it up, clean it, and move on with your life. It's not a big deal. Remember, the uglier, the more profit, right? Yeah, you can't move in the next day. It might be a little inconvenient, but that's where the money is. Because 3,000 square feet houses in that area, when I'm looking at 1,100 square feet for 265, let me show you this one. Well, the 230. Here's the, see this? Right down here, $180 a square foot. Okay, take a look at that number. All right, now let's go back and we'll take a look at our 3,000 square foot house. $89 a square foot. Okay, now 
what that tells you is you've got 40 to $50 a square foot of margin available. And 40 to $50 a square foot is more than enough for flooring and paint, all right? Even if you got to buy a window and repair a roof, do, do whatever happened in there is worth investigating. That's the secret to doing this. Whenever someone is pricing that low, something is wrong with that house, whether it's mold or otherwise, all these things can be fixed. I can, I can take a house with $50 a square foot margin. I can take a house. I can gut all the drywall. I can gut all the floors. I can put on a new roof, bring back all my cosmetics, put a new cabinets, new tile, new bathrooms. I can do the entire house remodeled as a DIYer for like probably $30 a square foot. Do the whole thing all over again. Now, if it needed that much, it'd be devalued even more. So at least there you're going to double your money. And uh, that's, that's a good bargain. But, you know, you go visit yourself. Make sure that it wasn't a fire. Because <laughs> that could be a different world altogether. All right. Who else have we got in the, in the queue here? Yeah, I might have some structural issues. But, you know, the roof lines look good. And whenever the roof line looks good, I'm not too worried about structure. I'm pretty sure it's probably more cosmetic. It might have had like a tree fall down in a storm, bust a hole in the roof, cause water damage. Maybe the folks didn't have insurance. They couldn't deal with it. Maybe it's an estate sale combined with a, an event like that. You'd be surprised. There are some really great opportunities out there. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Um, Joe Mully, Carroll County, Maryland, max budget 400. Okay. Carroll County, Maryland. There, Caroline County. I don't know if I got the right county. We're going to go with this anyway, because Maryland, yeah, it's going to be very, very similar. Let's take a look here. 400. Boom. All right. Let's have a look. So and this is interesting. Like this area of, 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 of the, the, the country here, this island area, it's actually kind of kind of pretty. It's historic, too. Now, I mean, there's lots of options here. I'm looking for something that's big and cheap. 2,000 square feet for 330. That looks like my house right there. That's big and cheap. Okay. Now, building 79, only 167 a square foot. That kind of looks like it might have some potential. It's got some property, half an acre lot. First of all, what am I seeing? Look at all that grass. First thing you see here is they don't have a fence, money. They don't have a backyard, outdoor living space, money. Whenever you can build out an outdoor living space and have privacy, you're going to increase your value. It's going to go through the roof. And on a half acre lot, you've got room to have that much fun. I'm pushing that price to 200 a square foot right away just by putting in a fence in a backyard. All right. Okay. And let's take a look at the house. Yeah, the kitchen is decent and it's got a little bit of an eat-in area here. Okay, I'm not sure about the layout. Oh, the, the separate dining room. Yeah, see that? Man, I hate separate dining rooms. How many houses were built where you got a dining room, a living room, kitchen, rec room, walls, 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 hallways, closets? When you tear all of that extra junk out of the way, you get such an such a open space for the open concept living. It's money in the bank. So whenever I see a house with a kitchen and a wall and then a dining room, I'm just like, tear out that wall. I don't care what it costs. It's worth doing. Okay, so they put in some new flooring. This is a wide plank flooring. Whether it's vinyl or laminate, I can't tell by the pictures. Looks more like a vinyl. Carpet in the bedrooms. It's old. It's wrinkled. That means the underpad shot means you need new flooring. The shower is custom. It's new. Okay, and the doors scream, hey, I'm original. All right, so you're going to have some work here, regardless of what you do. You need some flooring and you need some new doors. But you know what? All, all in all, wow. For 2,000 square feet, that's a pretty good deal. I'm going to say this. The outside is screaming a little bit dated. But if you were to put on a fence and, a, and some backyard outdoor living space and made a couple of finishing touches inside with your flooring and a decent paint job, because right now it has no, no personality. The walls are all white. Right? I mean, who wants that? So get in there. Do a couple cosmetic fixes. 
do something dramatic with this fireplace too. Like the, that green tile here and then a blank wall. You know, you can you can update that in a real, real hurry and make it much more of a focal point for the living area. Hmm. 3.30. Let's see what we got here. Um, I picked this house. Okay. Where in the heck is it anyway? I mean, it's not even on my map. Whoops. Whoops. Going to disappear. <laughs> All right. Yeah, definitely, guys. Worth it. Okay. Any house that has zero outdoor living space and it's nothing but grass has money to be made. Okay. We did that video recently where I did the backyard of my daughter's house and we did about a $30,000, $35,000 project there. Um, the wood was 6000 bucks. Yeah, I get it. You got to buy yourself uh, the gazebo and maybe a fire table. But those are optional choices, right? Having the outdoor living space is where the money is. And if you can put a fence on there for privacy, that's a win win every day of the week. That's great DIY projects that have great return. All right, next project. Let's have a look here. Wilmington, North Carolina, up to 400,000. Okay. That. Wilmington, North Carolina. Good. Up to 400,000. That was nice and easy. Okay. Well, there we go. We've got a couple of options right here, right out of the gate. All right, so for the same price, you can get an 1,800-square-foot house, four-bed, three-bath, or a 1,200-square-foot house, three-bed, two-bath. That's incredible. I guess it depends if you want to be in North or South Wilmington. All right, now what we're looking at, we're going to look here because that's, that's a lot of house for the same price. This one's on half acre. It's 217 a square foot. And this one is half acre. It's 309. Not 217. See the difference there? So let's take a look at what, what they think is worth 309 a square foot. It's clean. It's tidy, right? Low maintenance. And here you go. They've upgraded the doors. They've upgraded the hardware. They've upgraded the floors. They've upgraded the mantle. They put in the pot lights. They didn't remove the wall for open concept living, though, did they? See that? Bad choice. They had an opportunity to go open concept, and they missed it. Brand new kitchen, still separate from the rest of the house. Looks like, yeah, yeah, they really could have done that. Okay. It's nicely done, though. This is a really nice project. This is a great flip. So now you know in your neighborhood, and I don't know what that's all about, trying to be tricky. You don't put your wall tile where the floor is. That's just nuts. The whole idea of that drain is being visible. Um, outdoor patio, they got a new fence. You see the privacy concept? And they got a deck. They did it all right. That's how you do a flip. Okay. Now, let's go back. 309 a square foot. Let's incorporate that concept to here. What do they got? All right. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's go through this because this is how you go from, what did I say, 219? Yeah, 217 and 309. $90 a square foot up for grabs here. Okay. Let's go inside. Right away, what are we looking at? 12 by 12 tile in the front entrance. Screams old. Okay. Stipple ceilings. Get rid of them. Go smooth. Um, they're using cheap laminate floor. Let me just zoom this up. You see this? Whenever you see this picture, this, this, this look, you know that that's a laminate floor. Okay? It's just, it's got that really cheap, the three board look. There's no way in heck that's hardwood. Somebody put in a laminate floor. Uh, we're going to check the description later. But I'm telling you right now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Now, the windows are in decent shape. The house is in decent shape. It's dry. It's clean. It's organized. And then carpet going to the outside. That's just, that's nasty, right? You got to get rid of that. You can't have carpet going to a patio door. You just can't do that. More of that cheap laminate. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. The whole house. Now, you know, maybe I have to bite my tongue. If it's hardwood, it might be site finished, but I really doubt it at their price point. Now, here's an opportunity to update your kitchen. Those are original cabinets from a long time ago. This whole overhang here, you don't need the extra storage space. Find it somewhere else. Get rid of a wall. Put in a nice big island with lots of storage, and you're good to go. Like, you've almost got it. You've almost got it. That one piece of wall right here, 
And you can redesign your kitchen to wrap around. Oh, you almost got it. Tile countertops, original cabinets. Yep. Okay. This is why the money. $90 a, a square foot on this home is because they haven't updated this with modern amenities. And you know what? Nobody wants a kitchen where the sink is under a window separated from the rest of the cooking area. That's totally non-functional. Yeah, this dining room is off the kitchen, that big window here. It's already got a structural header across the top. So you cut that out right here to here, and you put in a door. And then you go open concept, and then you bring your traffic out of the kitchen and into the other area. And you bring these cabinets all the way across. And you make your kitchen much bigger. So you can get rid of that wall. You can wrap around your kitchen. Oh, and then you've got, you got in like an island there that you can eat at. Yep. Just too much stuff going on. Everything in that house is a hallway. There we go. Lots more of this lovely laminate. And now we got it. Boom. That's the picture we're looking for. Okay. Enough of that. Here we go. Learn how to learn how to drive, Jeff. All right. Down in this corner. You see this? Where my mouse is hovering? In the right bottom right-hand corner. Those are T moldings. You see how the wood is going one direction and then it's changing direction? And then right here, I can see that seam. The whole house is done in a cheap laminate. That's the money. That's the one I buy. Whenever I see a house with fake wood, and I know I got $90 a square foot room in the same market for competing houses, I know. If I just go and remove all that laminate, put in hardwood, put in tile, get rid of one wall, redesign my kitchen, upgrade my kitchen, I'm looking at, uh, boom, five times eh, 2010. 10,000 for flooring. I'm looking at 30,000 for a kitchen. The appliances are good. You just got to reposition them. Move a wall, change a door, do inside, outside, 10, 30. For 50,000 bucks? Yeah. 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 You can you can triple your money on that. That That's the one I buy. All right. Cheers. Now, let's get to another house. Dallas, Texas. Wow. 1885 to... 1985. <laughs> That's quite a range. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Um, I'm going to have some fun with that. 1885. All right. To 1985. Let's apply that first of all. And your price is up to 200. Is it even possible to get a house for 200,000 in Dallas, Texas? I would just think like there's a lot of competition for that. Now we're going to change our city here. Okay. Dallas, Texas. Let's see what happens. You've got to be kidding me. I have got to move to Dallas. That is in the city center. Wow. Okay. First of all, if you're going to go back that old, you realize that you've got massive amounts of money to put in for electrical, mechanical, plumbing, probably structure, probably insulation even. You're going to have to tear out the old walls. Let's just have some fun. Let's see what we can do. Let's get this. Let's look at the top end of 200,000 first of all. Here we go. Here's a three bed, two bath, 1,300 square feet. 1957. It's on a full acre. It's listed at 149. Okay. 149 on a full acre. Let's look at something cheap as we can get. What's the lowest price we can go? That's this. This, this actually. You know what? This this house has got a little bit of character. It might be worth taking a look. 1925, 155 a square foot. Okay? And it's got a smaller lot, quarter lot, quarter, quarter acre. And and here we go. All right. So right out of the gate. I love the porch. The idea of it anyway. It needs some overhaul work. These are original floors. Okay. Yeah, let's just zoom in. When you zoom in, you realize they're not as sexy as they are when they're not zoomed in. <laughs> so um, what I would do in this scenario is if I'm going to buy a house that's got old floors like this and they're done, right? And you're on some sort of a crawl space as far as the foundation. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all the floors. I want to know, are the floors just old and beat up or is there deterioration happening from underneath? And you got you to source that out. 
So you, you got to do a site inspection. You got get in that crawl space, get a flashlight, get in there with some moisture testers. You got to find out is that structure still sound, right? And uh, all other indications in there that it's in pretty pretty solid shape. But that kitchen is non-existent. So you got to do a floor out floor. You've got to do a complete layout change on this house. Wow. Okay. So a house like this, you can get a great price. So you got to gut all of the flooring. You got to gut the bathrooms. You got to gut the kitchen. You got to come back with decent quality flooring. And you've got to put in a kitchen that functions. And then you've got room to make some money. Because I'll be honest with you. I don't know how long Texas is going to hold on to their cheap housing values. I can't see it lasting forever. I think Texas is like probably one of the best states in the whole country to buy in because the values are low. The populations are high. The density is there. The jobs are there. I mean, uh, there's a lot of reasons why people want to move to Texas, especially if they're from California. <laughs> right? So, yeah, there's room. The problem is that one might be a little bit too old. Maybe you're going to have too many surprises. I don't like buying houses before building code era unless they're in a city where you get your money's worth. Like if I bought a house in Ottawa and it was uh, in the downtown core, an old red brick two-story, and it could be a beast of a house, right? But And have a lot of work done to it. And you could gut it right down to the floorboards and the brick. And then you can soda blast the brick and refresh it. You can put on a brand new roof. You can rebuild the entire inside of that house. And it's worth it because, you know, these homes can be worth one and a half million dollars when you're done. And that's a market you want to work in. But a 1945 house in a market that's 129, you're going to push 200 on the high side. I'm looking at you're probably only going to get 30 cents return on every dollar that you put in. May not be that exciting, but at least it's affordable, like I said, right? So, I mean, consider that. My goodness. All right. Maddie, let's do one more here. Let's get this going. Uh, Ironton, Ohio. All right. Ironton, Ohio. There we go. And we're looking for 200,000. We're still there. We're still good. So you're on the border with Kentucky, and there's, a, there's some competition down there at that price point. All right. So we're looking at a four bed, two bath, 2,000 square feet at 200,000. That's on the high end. Um, you know, wow. I'm So if we're going to look, look at a four bed, two bath, 2,000 square feet at 200,000, that's $100 a, a foot. Okay. And I'm looking right away, I'm looking at this one. Built in 1920. Great structure, great style, great bones, 37 bucks a square foot. You got yourself $63 a square foot in, in space. Now, not a 4.2, I get it. It's almost the same size, but price per square foot, as long as it's brought up to the same quality, you should be okay here. I think you got some room. Now, cute little property. Wow, a lot of original condition stuff here. Stained wood, though. This is the thing. Right? Yeah. It's going to be a lot of doors, a lot of walls. Okay. You got some plaster issues? Let me just bring this up here and we'll show everybody what's going on. All right. You see that ceiling? What I want to do is follow my cursor. See that dent right there? And then that ridge right there? And then that ridge right there? And then that ridge right there? What that is... This house obviously hasn't had air conditioning working in its favor. And back in the old days, they used um, uh, drywall panels, 16 inch wide, four feet long. And they would, they would nail all those up and then they would skim coat plaster without using any tape. And so the humidity over time eventually bows all of those and they get that scallop look, okay? So what you got here is a house that needs all brand new ceilings. That's a bit of a shame, right? But other than that, I mean, let's see if the floors look like they're any good. Yeah, the picture really doesn't do you any, any justice. I'm going to guess it looks a lot worse than that in real life. <laughs> okay. 
Well, if that's the case, you know, then it is what it is. Great staircase. Um, love some of the other features in here. You know, like, I mean, the house has got a lot of character, a lot of personality. But it looks like almost everything about this place is, like, super old. All right. How many bathrooms are in here? I didn't even see that. Two bath. Okay. <sighs> I don't mind taking on an old house. The thing is, if you've got to drop ceilings and you've got to change your flooring and you've got to update your plumbing and you got to update your wiring and you need new bathrooms and the kitchen's like original, that's a lot of original work. Now, as a DIYer, if you could tackle that over a five-year project, okay, and you can take a 60000 and turn it into two hundred. That's all blood, sweat, and tears. You've got to do it all by yourself, and you got to do it on permit. And you're going to push that house back to two hundred, and it's going to cost you probably fifty or sixty to get there. So you could make eighty thousand dollars tax free. The question is, these homes are really affordable. What is the job market like in that neighborhood? Why are you staying? Because the same amount of work put in an older home in an, in an area that has a higher valuation is going to get a better return. And ultimately, guys, that's the biggest that's the biggest question in it. Like, I'm in Ottawa. It takes me an hour and a half to get down to Ogdensburg, New York, okay? And the same house that I buy in Ottawa for like three quarters of a million dollars, I can buy for $120,000 in Ogdensburg. That's just the reality, right? Real estate is not national. It's geographic. It's, it's very local. And so if there isn't a healthy job market in the city, then what happens is all the people that used to work there and live there, they just grow old in their houses and they don't leave and they all become estate sales. But who's going to buy them? So if you want to get a really beautiful old house and you want to do a little bit of fixing up and you want to have a you want to have four or five bedrooms for your family, you can do that if you can work remotely because everybody can get you high speed Internet nowadays. So the idea of, well, I've got to have a, a latte place on my corner, right? I don't want to own a car. You're pushing yourself into a big city. You'll never be able to afford a house as a young person. But if you're willing to say, hey, I can move to a small town. I can have a small town vibe. I can refurbish an old house. I can live really cheap. And then there's somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle, there's room to buy an older house and fix it up that's still in a major city that has great opportunities and great amenities. So it really all comes down to this. The more the houses are selling for in your neighborhood, the more room you have to make money, okay? So consider that. Moving to a, a, a neighborhood that has low valuation also gives you low returns. So it's better to go to a place that has high valuation, buy the dog in the neighborhood, bring it up to speed with the rest of the neighborhood. You can get your three, 400% return on your investment, right? That makes sense to me as a DIYer. Otherwise, just buy a house that's clean and comfortable, but has no amenities. It's boring. Like that house that had the full acre and not a single backyard feature. No deck, no patio. You know, don't be afraid to throw up a fence. The best return investment renovating a house is on the outside, not the inside. So if you can live on the inside and you're like, this isn't bad. Baby, we can do this. Let's put down some new flooring maybe and a paint job. Nice. You get 5% return on the house just by painting the inside. On the outside, you get 5% by fixing up the outside, repairing it or painting it. Adding a fence, boom, that's money in the bank. That'll buy $3 for every dollar and you put in lumber. Putting on a deck, get yourself some outdoor living space and a fire pit. Have a life at home so that you don't have to spend all your money entertaining yourself outside of home. That drives up your value, okay? And if you're not sure where I get all that information, um, it's the cost versus value report. The American market have done a fabulous job of collaborating and bringing all that information together. You can actually buy the report for your neighborhood. Okay. Go online, check them out, put in your address and information, and you can actually find out what renovations and price points for renovations bring the most return on investment in your neighborhood because they're all different. And you can find out that garage doors do great. <laughs> Adding three feet of lead stone around the outside of your house and get rid of some siding does great. Painting your old aluminum or, or you know, or, or staining your brick and modernizing some things, putting in some soft lighting, anything you can do to the outside to make it sexy is going to get you good return on investment. But being in the right place, really, that's the key. 
We've learned that today. Lots of great cheap places in America you can live. Don't buy all the hype. You can still afford a house. You're just going to have to move to a place where you can afford it. And once you've done that and you've got that sucker paid off, take that equity, move into a market that you can take all your DIY skills and then turn it into an income generating machine, right? Listen, we all got about 20 or 25 years where a body is going to work with you to help renovate. And you get to a certain age, not too far away from now for me, but you get to a certain age, you just don't want to spend all your time in the dirt. So take advantage of your youth, get into the real estate market. Go and build something, develop your skills. And even if you don't get a great return investment the first time, develop your skills because there are houses in cities out there that you can get three or four times your money that you put into your project. And you can earn wealth and you don't even have to pay taxes on it if you live in the house. Just saying, that's how I'm making my money. I'm taking all of the skills that I learned throughout all my years, just trying to pay the bills for my family. Now they're all grown up and gone. I'm putting in the last 10 years, sweat equity, and I'm building and I'm building and I'm building. I'm going to work myself to the bone because I refuse to retire broke. All right. And if you're like that and you're like me, then you know what? Yes, you can make money working for a living, but you got to work for yourself on your own damn house. All right. No one else is going to pay you the kind of money you're worth except you. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us on our live show, guys. This has been awesome. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully. When we take a look at some of these places like Irontown, you know, businessmen in America will get the idea, hey, there's some great neighborhoods here where the cost of living is cheap. If I set up shop over there, we could revitalize a neighborhood that needs young blood, right? And we can hire and be successful, and we don't have to pay San Francisco wages. You could just move your shop to Irontown. This is awesome. Guys, um, take care. We'll see you soon. Don't forget, we're finishing up or continuing our series with our, our trailer build coming up this weekend. Okay, lots of great content. I'll see you in the next show on Tuesday next week, 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I don't even know what it's about off the top of my head, but uh, we're going to send out a notification. So if you want to find out what's going on, just check out our, our homepage and we'll have notifications there. We'll see you again in the next video. Cheers till next time.